اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ربش رحلی صدری و یسر لی امری وحل العقدۃ من لسانی یفقہ قولی مائی لارڈ ایکسپینڈ فار می مائی چیسٹ ود اشورنس اینڈ ایز فار می مائی ٹاسک اینڈ ان ٹائی دا ناٹ فرام مائی ٹنگ دیٹ دے می انڈرسٹینڈ مائی اسپیچ وی ول اسٹڈی جز نمبر ففٹین ٹوڈے yesterday's question was which kind of people can we invite toward islam there were several aspects to this but its concise and comprehensive answer is found in the life of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his seerah the order and sequence of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam's dawa was first his relatives then close friends and family and then wherever there was a crowd of people In addition, he gave da'wah to as many circles as possible. This is the order we see Prophet ﷺ's da'wah. So the circle of our da'wah starts from me, then my house, my family, my children, my society, and then every place which is within my reach. Now which da'wah should we give? We will discuss this in a just sometimes in the future. Now we will start our first roba of today's just. which has Surah Bani Israel, an event occurred one year before Hijra. Allah took His Prophet ﷺ on the journey of Miraj. Prophet ﷺ along with Hazrat Jibreel ﷺ rode on the Burraq to Masjid Aqsa and prayed with the Prophets. Then Prophet ﷺ was given a tour of the highest skies where he met several Jalilul Qadr Prophets. The daily prayers were made obligatory glimpses of paradise and hell were shown similarly on the way back prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam reached masjid al aqsa again and then masjid al haram this event has been mentioned by allah and these things are shown to prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam so that there may be a sign for him and his faith can be strengthened allah subhanahu wa taala shows such signs to his prophets After this Bani Israel is briefly addressed it is reminded of some important points and a few basic principles are given when this revelation was sent down it was the era when prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was about to migrate he may not have known at that time but one year after the revelation of this surah the migration took place now since the journey was to be made to a place of strength an islamic state was about to be formed since a power was about to be achieved here allah defined a charter of the basic principles upon which an islamic society is formed the basic things that allah requires in an islamic government are mentioned here first it is said that quran shows a straight path in which there is no bend no complications no evil and no difficulty in understanding It shows a very clean and clear path. We have been reading Quran for some time now and it is our own experience that Quranic ayahs enter the heart with ease and they are easily understood. It is a clear path. However, later people have made it difficult. The society we live in today has become merged. The traditions, the culture, the energy and the different theories have formed such a mixed plate that now we find it difficult to turn to a religion. Unlike our past when the religion used to be quite simple and easy to understand and follow. Then Allah says, man asks for evil the way he should ask for goodness. It is repeated that the disbelievers say, why a calamity does not come? If a calamity is easy to handle why are we being granted more time Quran asks them do you realize what it is that you are asking for but sometimes man does not realize what he is asking for is not good for him he prefers something for himself and then several years later he realizes at that time it was best for him so what should a man ask for Allah alone knows what is good for him and what is bad for him. Then Allah says, 
no bearer will bear the burden of another everybody will bear their own burdens it does not refer to the acts which begin after death such as sadqa jariya or azab jariya rather it means you cannot blame someone else for your mistakes you cannot hold someone else responsible for your sins regardless of what the whole world is doing instead of pointing fingers at others our first responsibility is to observe ourselves at the flaws that we need to correct what are the traits we possess that are not in the line with islam instead of minding our own business we start going after others even when we read ayahs we wonder how people are and what they are doing we read of the hypocrites and the people that are lost in this world we think of some faces but in fact allah forbids all of that may also fit me so our first critical glance must be upon ourselves we also see that every person's omen is hung on his neck we see pictures of prisoners with their name plates hung on their necks similarly allah has symbolized every person's doing and what he is going to gain be it in this world or the hereafter whatever he is planting today he will have to cut himself tomorrow so he is writing his life and his hereafter with his own hands next it is asking is the kind of struggle that is required for akhira really being done how much efforts do we make for this world and how many for the hereafter we do not know when this world will end we do not know any limits whether we have one hour one year or 10 years but for this limited time we have so much to do in this world the degree that you achieve graduate and pursue masters if you count from nursery class then you spend about 20 to 22 years of your life but it took us so many years to finish the complete translation of the quran if we talk about sira in sahi bukhari ahadith then have we completed it in our lives if we have then it's very good but if we haven't then we should wonder what our proportions of time and wealth are in this world and the hereafter after this a very important chapter comes it is from aya 22 to 38 it is about the basic principles of the islamic system of life This structure stands based on kalmai tayyiba that we studied in the previous chapters which is beneficial to people. These are the basics here. The first thing here is not to worship any one besides Allah. Regarding parents, be well mannered with them. Do not say uff. Do not speak in the degrading manner. Speak softly and pray for them. What pray for them that O oh Allah have mercy on them. just as they had mercy on me next it is mentioned to give relatives the needy and travelers their rights next it says to avoid wasteful spending if you cannot help someone then answer with kindness he should neither be a miser nor be an overspender next it says not to kill your children out of the fear of poverty we talked about this previously as well that to limit your children yourself or use a method to reduce their numbers only because we cannot afford this reason is not acceptable before allah because you are not the provider allah is next is do not even come close to adultery that includes all the things that bring you close to it and we find its details in ahadees do not do take a human life except by right which means qisas or killing someone during war or as a punishment with exception to this there is no permission to murder protection of an orphan's wealth as for the wealth that is in the hands of a guardian he can only take only as much as it is needed and not more honor your pledges This includes your pledge with Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala as well as your pledge with people. Next it says always measure using right scales. Do not follow what you do not have any certain knowledge of. This is such an aya that if we understand in our lives half the problems of our society will be solved. Pursuing something that we do not know 
be it stalking on social media or be it taking details from people all these things are included in this we do not have the permission to follow something and talk about something that has no concern to us because it creates further problems do not walk on the earth arrogantly you have no power of your own what can you do on this earth all the things that we studied in surah raad and before that what do you have in your hands you have no idea how this system works you do not even know the function of the things that you use you cannot even stop them you cannot even change them then on what basis do you work with arrogance and then in the very end it is said that the violation of any of these commandments is unlikable to your lord if you take an overall look at all the things that have been mentioned here there are only a few acts of worship here it starts with belief and we saw prayer fasting hajj and zakah but here all the things are regarding society the relations with people my behavior with people my parent my relatives and travelers then comes the trait of my personality speaking the truth fulfilling my promises not pursuing irrelevant things and not being a spendthrift there should be a balance in spending too so we see a complete personality map is sketched here and adhering to this personality criteria is not an easy task it is so difficult for us all to take one thing after another and grade ourselves accordingly why not give you this task today even though this is not the question for today out of all these things that i have mentioned grade yourself on these things on a scale of 1 to 10 then see what score you achieve there are so many things yet on which i have to wonder where i stand next we move to the second roba which also includes similar belief lessons so we'll go a little quick as we have to start surah kahf next there is not a single thing that is not praising allah including me and you and that means everything is obeying allah it is performing just the way allah has asked it to everything is following the system so we see allah's praise by observing everything therefore allah likes the words that are in praise of allah subhanallah wa bihamdihi subhanallah alazim then he says ask them who is this that will return them to life they will say allah next he said utter only the best words from your tongue and this tongue is the one which leads to so many problems evils broken hearts broken families and broken societies it is the one thing that if you guarantee allah allah will guarantee you paradise so the use of tongue is not too light for us that we can speak whatever we say as each word we speak is recorded next there is a story of hazrat adam alaihi salam as we read earlier there was a sentence here that shaitan was told if you want you may take your part from what from our work our wealth our time and shaitan is always in the effort to take his part so we have to take care that we ourselves don't gift anything to him then it has been mentioned to take help from prayer in the problems and the attitudes of people and specifically the hajjud has been mentioned here it has also been mentioned to perform prayer and to recite quran after the morning prayer performing the hajjud will make you closer to allah and then those demands were negated that people made to prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam such as showing a sign dissension of something from the sky the coming of the calamity something unusual so that we will instantly know that you are in the right the coming of an angel the book written on slates all these demands have been mentioned and negated and even those who saw these things up close even they did not accept the truth so do not worry over these things when we approach the third row of this jews after one or two ayas surah bani israil comes to an end allah says the quran has been revealed little by little and as appropriate to the event this was not a book that was given all together rather it completed an entire journey with the muslims along with it step by step as they moved from makkah to madina the quran gave guidance on every occasion 
After this, we begin Surah Al-Kahf, a surah that is recited frequently in our houses. The surah of the last period of Makkah. We find a hadith that this surah protects from the evil of Dajjal. Now, what is Dajjal? You must have read several stories of this that close to the Jal's appearance, what things will happen and this will be the time when Qiyamah will be close. But when we delve into deeper tafsir, we realize that the Jal is in fact someone special, but the stage that is set before his arrival, gradually circumstances will be changing. The word Dajjal has been derived from Dajjal, which means something that appears which it is not a deceit, a fraud. Something that is quoted, but it is actually something else. You believe it is one thing, but it is in fact another. So the Jal has been derived from Dajjal. The entire setup that will be created will lead to people not realizing right from wrong. You think something is completely correct, but you learn otherwise later. Everything is so quoted, so different, so based on deception that man will find it difficult to find the right path. In that time, Quran will provide guidance and especially Surah Kahaf will provide guidance. There are topics concerning two matters found in Surah Kahaf. Faith in the unseen, Iman bil ghaib and materialism and both these things are opposite. The person who believes that there is a world after this world and believes in paradise, hell and hereafter, that there will be a visit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and one will be held accountable and in the existence of angels. And the other person is that who believes that what he sees and feels and what I can use right now only this exists. Both these things create very different mentalities. And both these personalities are very different. Their belief will be different. Their acts will be different. Their conversation will be different. Their scale of manners, priorities will be different. What they collect, what they spend, their time, where they go, what they overlook. All these changes are based on a person's belief. And most of the time, this belief is not even based on what a person says. A person might say that I need to prepare for hereafter, not this world. But you can judge by a person's acts, speech and priorities where that person stands, where you spend your money, where you spend your time, where you sit, what you collect. It tells who you are between these two. If you believe in hereafter, all your matters will be in that direction. And if you believe in materialism and this world, then all your matters will be based on this. And then the effects of this will be seen on society. They affect one person, other person and society as well. For this reason, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends different trials to check these things. And then He filters. We do filter. We have a huge friend circle which then begins to narrow down. Hard times come, we trust friends, face deception. Slowly we reach a point in life when even if we have one to two genuine friends, it is a blessing. So how do we shortlist these people? In hard times, in troubles, in helping us. So Allah shortlists and filters like this. A person's belief is tested by one of four ways as mentioned in Surah Kahaf. One is how strong a person's belief is in his heart. Second is his wealth, which he loves. Third is where his knowledge takes him. Fourth is, when he gains power, what does he do? So Surah Kahaf addresses all these lessons in the form of stories. This also came in Surah Kahaf that if you want to recognize the people who wish to gain this world, you will see there will be two to three prominent things in them. One is, that they will bend towards this world. They will follow people who are negligent of Allah. Toward people who deny Allah and follow a sinful path, a person automatically joins the people he likes. Our WhatsApp group, Facebook pages that we follow, when we sit and talk in groups in our communities, we automatically search for like people and get attracted to them. So we create such a circle around us this way. What is our circle like? Third is the desire of the nafs. We spoke a lot of it yesterday. 
another sign is they have no balance if they bend toward one thing they bend too much next is the story of the people of the cave it also says not to go in detail there were a few youngsters with their dog it does not matter how many they were in number they were young and so dear to allah that he mentioned this in this quran for us to read it came down to belief restricted themselves to the cave allah put them to sleep then wakened them the entire story is narrated i will not narrate it so you may open it and read out of interest they were tested on belief that they have announced their faith but as they face trials people's oppression then to stay firm on this belief will become much hard for us we were born into islam no one is oppressing us for this no one is challenging us if ever such a time comes is our belief strong enough that i will surpass the trial this incident was one of belief in the fourth roba there are more incidents regarding two men with gardens they both have a lot but their attitudes are different one will say i have earned in myself my intelligence and planning the other says that no say masha allah and be grateful to allah and for such an attitude the result is that Allah takes his blessing whenever he wishes the same happens to us we do our planning and do not know what happens to us the trial here is a trial of wealth and then it has been mentioned that wealth and children are an adornment of the life in this world it does not prove who stands where it does not make any difference the real difference is made by your own good deeds and in the end we have to return to Allah then there is allah's hold his interrogation we have to stand and tell him what we have brought now surah kahf is in continuation a new incident is starting which will continue in the 16 years so we will resume from there inshallah here we complete just 15 but the question that i have to ask is what six things has allah advised by following which a person can stay safe from the evil of the jal next we come to the dua surah bani israil has two duas one dua in ayah 24 to pray for your parents that allah may have mercy on them like they have mercy on you in childhood and the other dua is ayah 80 prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was taught this dua for when he will go to medina regarding commands to be followed wherever you are be truthful wherever you go whatever conditions ease or hardship whatever land you go to you should remain truthful also ask for power from allah as power is a way of establishing the way of the quran there are so many commands in the quran that cannot be established without power this is why this dua was taught to the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam so that he may completely act on the quran with this dua we complete today's lesson oh my lord make me enter with truth and bring me out with truth and bestow upon me from your presence the dominance that assist and the power that supports inshallah we will complete surah kahf tomorrow assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh